Red Hill. I come from Oneida, Wisconsin. My mother is of the Oneida Nation. My father is Dakota from the Crow Creek tribe, in uh, Crow Creek, South Dakota. I come here to Bear Butte to work with men from different tribes and trying to get this re-education program started within our tribes. You know, we all come from different areas, but yet we all can relate to this violence against women and it not being part of our culture. You know, understanding that and, and speaking with the men who will become our allies and spreading that word as to how to live as a Native man with, with the teachings of the Red Road, with the Native values, with the compassion, the pity, the, the, the uh, understanding. Some of the teachings of the Red Road that I was taught, like the white buffalo calf woman, that, that uh, when those two hunters came upon her, one had bad thoughts. You know, I always heard that story. It never hit home until, until I came through this work, you know, that, that even in thought we have respect for our women. So it, it shows us that in our, even, even as that Chinupa was brought to us, the, these are the values we have to come back to. In, in all of our tribes, we have creation stories, which, which talks about the woman. In my mother's tribe, the Oneida, they talk about the sky woman and the longhouse and, and the natural protections that were there for the woman. We are a matriarchal people in, in Oneida, and, and the woman was, it was her home. And and if the man if the if he was abusive to his wife, it was her family that he come live he come to live with. The man always went to live with the woman's family within our Oneida culture, so she had the natural protection from her family. So domestic violence was very rare in our culture at one time. And coming here today and, and talking with the men, you know, helping them realize that, you know, in, in our history, domestic violence, sexual assault was rare, but in today's culture, in today's society, Native women experience more sexual and physical abuse than any other, any other women in this country. And, and we, we talked a little bit about this history and these values to put it in the context of, of what it was like in our history, how did we believe as men, what, what, what true strength was, the strength of humility and love and compassion. In today's society, if a man was to talk like that, he would be seen as being weak, as, as, so, so men have to be strong and not back down. That's what they believe in today's society, that they can take it. And a lot of our native men have, have learned this over time. And we talked these last three days about what it means to be a native man, to be what we call an Chasha, a common man, somebody who lives his life for the people. This is part of, a, this is my journey, the, the, the red road walking of the creator, you know, taking me through half my life of that journey and, and not knowing anything else of abuse and alcoholism and violence and and I was very good at it. And then after losing a brother in 1987, I, I started making this healing journey, not just with the alcohol, but with, with so many different aspects of life, and including the, the relationship with women as, as a Native man. And after 27 years of sobriety, you know, that, that, that part about being, being this tough guy and... and you know, it allows me to put that aside and really be who I know I am inside. You know, and I think a lot of our Native men will understand that. But, but uh, the, the, the demands of the society we live in today and what they think is a man will, will always be there. But one by one, little by little, we as Native men are reclaiming our honor. And that honor is, is how we are within our communities, how we are to our children, how we are to our females, and we are the protectors and the providers. Identity, 
that's part of what was taken away from us, a big part. You know, our, our Native men don't engage in the community because a lot of our Native men don't have that direction. The direction they chose is like what, you know, my first part of my life. And, and that, that's how I, I thought that was being a Native man how violent I could be, how how many beers I could drink. I thought that's what made me a warrior. But a warrior is, is somebody who is out there and, and protecting and providing, helping in his community so that we can, we can make our women safe again. And we don't have, as Native men, we don't have too many places to, to go to to be able to be honest about our fears and our hurts that, that we, we stuff inside and then to put it into a context, you know, of, of a history that, 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 has, that has shamed our people, belittled our people, made us feel less, and, and nobody ever told me anything differently. So the men that come here from, from these different communities, our, our, our base is getting stronger. The need for, it's, it's not a, a, a program that's run is to encourage men. It's to help them understand where this come from, all this violence, this domestic violence, and to encourage them to understand that as Native men, we, we have a road already there, but so many of us, have never had the opportunity to to learn that road because what we call our our pride and and it's it's a false pride it's a false pride that we stand behind because there's a lot of fear in there and we can't let nobody in to to show our fears and so we protect it and as we we get stronger as native men as a the prophecies of the seventh generation you know we're at that time today and our men are Coming home, as I call it. Yeah, I just stopped and see my nine-year-old granddaughter, and I want her to grow up knowing that it's not okay for a man to put his hands on her in a violent way. That she is more than than what he's going to try and make her believe. That she would have that about herself. You know, my grandpa told me this. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. I hope we did capture. We're going to be editing. Oh.